Oh, hallelujah. I want you to look at someone sit beside you and tell them welcome into the presence of God. Grace for uncommon favor. Grace for uncommon favor. Hallelujah. Amen. I kindly uh, take notice of these announcements. Number one, um, our dear sister Jackie and our dear brother Joseph Nee Kwe will be bringing their son to be dedicated to God on the 11th. Hallelujah. On the 11th of December. Amen. Amen. Kindly take notice. On the 11th of December. Ora, on the 11th of December. Make sure you don't get lost on the 11th. Happy birthday in advance. (laughs) Secondly, please take notice. Secondly, our church birthday uh, party. (laughs) Christmas party. (laughs) Hallelujah. Christmas party. Amen. I please notice and just make adjustment where necessary. Christmas party is on the 18th of December. Amen. It's on what date? Why not? If it's food, we remember the date. Amen. So on the 18th. And on the 24th is our Christmas service. 25th is Sunday and it's Christmas Day. Uh, I know you and you know me. Amen. So we've decided that on the 24th of December is our Christmas service. And it's from 12 p.m. to 2. 12 to 2. Please, from what time? 12 to 2. Hallelujah. 12 to 2 and we are done. So kindly take notice. 24th December. We can't have Christmas service unless we arrange for transportation in this weather. And there are some of you, you've decided not to come to church early because of the weather. Hallelujah. And so since we don't have a lot of buses, and since you are too precious to be touched by the cold, we've decided that 24th of December, 12 to 2, let's make it a point and attend. Hallelujah. The fourth announcement, 31st. We are still waiting on the owners to locate us. Amen. <laughs> we are waiting on the owners to relocate us, to either keep us here or send us somewhere. Hallelujah. So as we go along, we will let you know. Amen. Amen. Bishop uh, sends us greetings. They've got into Ghana safely and uh, he says hello. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Proverbs 29. We're still dealing with vision. We started last week with what a vision isn't. Hallelujah. And we've, we've, we've deliberated a lot about vision and why vision is essential <clears throat> for your success. Last night as I was praying through, the Holy Ghost revealed something interesting about vision to me. He said, Joe, do you know that vision is also a shield that saves you from every calamity of the enemy? Your ability to undertake the journey of God's vision for your life also says that you value the word of God. Hallelujah. And on Friday we came to understand wherever God's word can be found, God, God's respect can be there. Amen. That's why he did not send his praise. That's why he did not send his authority. He said, and I send forth my word and it cannot return unto me void people by now you should know that wherever god's word is god is am i speaking to somebody wherever the word of god is god is one of the foremost means to get god to come closer to you is a desire for his word an unquenchable desire for god's word if you want god's presence if you want god's authority god's power Con- to walk in continuous flow of divine miracles you need. You just have to get closer to the word. Mary looked at them and said, this is the word. Whatever this word tells you, do it. Because everything you are believing God for is also found in the word. And the word is standing before you. And don't doubt what the word tells you. Hallelujah. Vision is an end of journey you are about to begin. 
I am the Lord and I declare the end from the beginning from the end. Or the end from the beginning. There's always an end and there's a beginning. Hallelujah. Meaning that I declare the, at the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. God is God. He can choose to. Before you even undertake the journey of vision, he's already mapped out how the vision has to be achieved. Hallelujah. But one of the things God has given you authority over is the ability to choose. Whether if you will follow the path he set for you. Being humans, often God does not give us the full version of the vision he's embedded in your spirit. He doesn't. He just sends you with his power. Imagine if Jesus has told the disciples that some of you, you're going to have your heads cut off. Amen. Some of you will be boiled in oil. How many would have undertaken that journey? Amen. And so God sends you with his authority and his power. But he's, uh, the foremost thing God sends you with is his word. His word goes before you. And that's all you need. Hallelujah. And all these things shall be added. If you want to excel in life, if you want to be able to achieve not your vision, but the vision of God for your life, understand that your ability to walk in that vision is connected to how much word you have in you. As long as the vision is from God, how much word you have in you determines how you will excel with that vision. Human ability is so limited, so limited. So human help is so limited. I think it's Psalm 75 or whatever. He said, even the strongest of all men does not know what to do with their hands. At some point, your degree will fail you. At some point, your connection will fail you. At some point, your political affiliation will face out. But what will never fail you is the word of God to your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so therefore, it is your responsibility, church. It is your responsibility to ask God, what is your vision for me? Because the Bible says that it is God that worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Vision is part of God's power plan to cause you to will to do his good pleasure. Until you're on the journey of God's vision for your life, you're living a whimsical life. You will struggle. What brings cessation to struggles in life is a person's desire to undertake the vision of God for their lives. Nobody becomes great by serving another person's purpose and vision. Oh yes, it is good. Within the context of another man's vision, another individual's vision, God births or kickstarts your vision. Faithfulness is the currency that allows you to embrace your vision and to also to achieve it. Your ability to serve another man's vision. Even when it comes to money, Jesus told them that uh, if, if your own mammon cannot be given to you until you keep another man's mammon. He was talking about money. And so Paul says in the book of Corinthians, it is therefore found in stewards that they have to be faithful. Faithfulness is the currency that empowers you to achieve your vision easily. Easily. The danger of assuming you know better than the vision God has given you is that you end up nowhere. May say you end up where? Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? Everybody sitting here has something. <laughs> it is nebulous. You can't touch it. But you know it is there. It is there. One of the ways the enemy stops us from pursuing the vision of God, I said the other, is unnecessary distraction. Things that have no bearing to the vision of God. One of the things I've learned to, as you go along in the pursuit of the vision of God, learn to cut off certain things. Can you imagine? Have you noticed that Jesus ended up on the cross with just one? And that one was not even his disciples, the centurion. He started alone. Hello? 
at some point the because of his vision he carried people he carried them from 120 from 12 from seeing the first and collect and uh, talking to john and jameson and, and they became 120 from 120 then then peter stood up and uh, preached and 3,000, 5,000. then there was an explosion but when it came to the point where he had to leave he left alone at some point in the pursuit of your vision, you have to declutter. Tell somebody you have to declutter. You see, many of you are where you are because of friends. Friends that have nothing in common with where you are going. Desires that have no bearing to where God wants to take you. I said that the other day. If somebody asks why you super spiritual, tell them for the sake of your vision. Because you see, naturally, you don't have what it takes. Let the college example, you remember the college? 44 in college. Amen. And I was, I, uh, if you got me wrong, please listen. I'm not against you studying. But you see, be honest with yourself. And look at your responsibilities. And look at your abilities. And find something which you, which you can easily study. And stop disturbing it with notes. Now your children become your trouble because they won't help you write your notes. Did they send you to college? <laughs> Amen. So I'm not against that. But what I'm trying to get you to understand. It is dangerous to waste your time in life. People. It is so dangerous to waste your time. When Peter tried to stop Jesus. And they said. Oh Jesus told them what he was about to suffer. And not. Peter said. Ah. We, it, it, it's not. The Bible said. Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. Jesus said. Get thee behind me. Satan. For thou savorest that which is. With, you have no savor. No desire. To see that which is of God to come to pass. What Jesus was trying to say is that. I can't be distracted. When the women were crying in the Ver Dolorosa as Jesus carried the cross, crying, Jesus turned and gave them a warning, which is also a salutation. Oh, you women of Jerusalem, cry for yourself. I have undertaken my purpose. I'm suffering because of my vision, but there's more glory ahead. Ah, there's more glory. How Jesus endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now sat at the right hand side of God. People, if you're going to go places, the foremost thing that you speak is your vision. Amen. The foremost thing that you speak is your vision. And we started with what isn't vision? And I said, number one, ambition is what you want to do. Vision is what God has called you to do. Know the difference. Amen. There's nothing wrong with being ambitious. But it is dangerous if you pursue your, your ambition at the expense of God's vision for your life. If you're smart enough, you have to sit down and to, to, to separate what vision is. Yes, and what your ambition is. And I tell you, the easier way for you to achieve your ambition is to pursue with, with the vision of God with everything. David said, my desire is for the tabernacles of the house of God. At one point he said, I would be a gatekeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wicked. Oh, how lovely are thy tabernacles desire as the deer pants for the water brooks so so my soul if you wake up every morning and your vision does not push you something is wrong somewhere amen it is vision that qualifies an individual to talk about prosperity the easier way for you to break through in life is the pursuit of your vision but sometimes we look at the enormity of the vision we did not embed the seed of the vision in ourselves Am I speaking to some? Then we looked at the enormity that measure our abilities. But God never said, I'm going to help you achieve this vision by your ability. He just called you and said, it is not by might, it is not by power, it is by my spirit. The wind blow it where it listed and you know it did not. The Bible says, so is a person born of the spirit. As long as you have the Holy Ghost leading you, you can achieve that vision. And I see it happening in somebody's life in the mighty name of Jesus. No demon, no which no power anywhere can stop the individual walking by the spirit tell somebody vision tell somebody i have a vision god will help me achieve it so ambition is not vision having an ambition it is normal it is all right to be ambitious but be careful 
and that your ambition does not cloud your judgment when it comes to pursuing God's vision. And sometimes the reason why what we call God's vision for our lives, which in actual sense is an ambition, and, and these things don't come to pass, is simply because you subjugated the calling of God for your life somewhere. And you're pursuing that which has no bearing. It came. Your ambition emanated out of you. It didn't come from God. But he wants you to pursue his vision first. And all these things. And what all these things. And all these things. Including what you desire and believe in for. Will come to pass. Am I speaking to somebody? What's your vision? Everybody comes to Hollywood with a dream. What's your dream? Pretty, uh, uh, was a pretty woman. Richard Gere, Julia Roberts, the opening chapters of that great movie. There's this, I don't know if the guy was mad or just, hey, what's your dream? He kept walking up and down in the boulevard in Hollywood. Everybody comes to Hollywood with a vision, with a dream. What's your dream? And the camera just did what went away. The question to you this day is that, what is your vision? Just by you, me trying to explain ambition to you, within the core you should see what your vision is. Until you start, you wouldn't have resources. If you don't start and you're waiting for resources, nobody would invest in air, in emptiness. Prove it. Hello? Nobody would take their heart as they say, harden money. Look at harden money and invest in something you don't believe in. If you truly believe in your vision, save and start something. Others will join. Am I speaking to somebody? And I said, number two, that vision is not impression. Being impressed, being impressed by what others are doing. And then suddenly you have an idea because you saw somebody singing. He singing and, and the Holy Ghost was moving and, and then suddenly you also want to sing so that you, you are impressed and you feel deep and you don't even know key D or key A now they put the microphone in they give you the microphone and I sing and they say oh I'm D D D D just when they are finding D Z oh try and find Z Z Z Z by the time they finish they would have sucked you because that's not you are impressed by what another person was doing and you also you will fail it is not Am I speaking to somebody? So number one, vision is not ambition. That the reason why I, 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 I want to emphasize on that is that there are too many ambitious people out there who are telling us that their ambition is a vision. Understand that vision has a voice. It will speak. Habakkuk chapter 2. No vision can be quieted. Poverty cannot quiet any vision. Sicknesses cannot. They kept Joseph in prison. His vision brought him out. They kept him in the world. His vision brought him out. Everywhere he went, his vision brought him out. Vision does not keep quiet. I said that vision does not die. But we kill it off ourselves with unnecessary things. No vision dies. As long as it's a truly tested test that vision from God it cannot die it cannot the right the Bible said in Habakkuk that a vision number one is for an appointed time so if a vision has a voice number two understand that vision runs on time people listen what you have to do now many years ago when I was about 22 23 I could pray for six hours non-stop drop yeah yeah six hours today today by the time I finish with my boss, senior bobo, I could pray for six hours, seven hours, start in the morning, nothing today. What has to be done now? Please don't postpone it. Hello? Now you have the ability to pray. Pray so much because there's coming a day and a time you wouldn't have that strength. It doesn't matter how you argue with me. I'm telling you. As thy days are, so shall thy strength be. It does not lie. What you have to do now, do it. If you have to reconcile now, do it. 
If you have to make peace now, do it. Whatever you have to do now, do it now. There's coming a day and a time. Your abilities, your strength will wane. It will be too late. What will be left will be whimsical wishes and I wish had I known I should have. Now, now, now. How am I speaking? Correct your child now before when he grows to, to only to disgrace you. What has to be done now has to be done. Now, one of the things you need to understand that vision works with time is simply this. Now, we often make this mistake. Oh, look at that 70-year-old man. He's, he, he, if 70-year-old, he could do it, I can do it. Wrong. The mindset that Mr. A did it so I can do it is evil and is wrong and is envious and is jealous. It's not from God. Guess what? A vision works with time. Understand the timing of God for each and every individual is entirely different. Hello? Am I speaking to somebody? Caleb was 80. Could hold the sword and go up the mountain. 80 year old, go up the mountain and let's see. David was 17. Stood before Goliath and killed Goliath. If Goliath had appeared when David was 80, Goliath would have killed I was speaking to some. Jesus was 30, first started his ministry at 30, ended at three years. God's timing for each and every one of us with regards to the vision of God for our life is entirely different. God works with us based on season, on times, and then phases. Phases starting with a P H A S E S. And the platforms are different. When it's your time, God will lift you and bring you to the place of prominence. When it's not your time, God will keep preparing you until when he deems it is right. So saying that, oh, this one was this one, he did, so I'm also going to do it. Measure yourself. Is it God's timing with regards to your vision? Amen. Like I said, there was an era where everywhere you go, there was a Ghanaian restaurant. Ghanaian restaurant. Love me, love you restaurant. Two weeks, the closest. <laughs> to adorn your mommy, sing love for the love one, sing song for the... By the time you go and come back, the restaurant has closed. Don't mind your wife, Apatashiba. They will open it within a few, <laughs> within, within a few weeks. It is gone. But the ones that were truly called, watch this, have withstood the test of time. May your vision withstand the test of time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone here has the seed of a vision. Unfortunately, not everyone will undertake the journey. But I know I'm speaking to a great group of people who will undertake the journey to bring glory to God. And the prophet will come to them in the name of Jesus. Number three, the third thing which isn't a vision is imagination. Imagination. One person said that there are two nations and you have to belong to one. Condemnation or image nation. Hallelujah. Imagination isn't vision. I mean, I, 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 I thank God for the ability to imagine. It, it is, it is a, 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 a full picture of what can happen. Hallelujah. It is a sign of something great yet to happen. Imagination isn't vision. Don't imagine. Some, sometimes you listen to things. I mean, revelation is subjective. Anyway, it's subjective. The only time revelation is objective is when you, the carrier of the revelation, has been blessed by it and has impacted others. Am I speaking to somebody? And, and, and it is subjective in the sense that it comes to you and until you qualify it and profit from that revelation, it is so subjective. The danger in ministry, as you are in ministry, don't imagine things you can't find in the Bible and force it on the congregation. Eh? I always speak it to somebody. Because one of the most powerful media of the human spirit ascending into a realm the body cannot is imagination. If I tell you to close your eyes right now, imagine yourself in a, was a, a private jet, Embra, whatever, well custom design. If I tell you right now, you start smiling when your eyes are closed, 
Hmm, hmm. The pilot is taking off. And you're telling your kids, hurry up, hurry up. It's our own private jet with your name on it. It is nice, isn't it? But when you open your eye, it means nothing, man. You are just imagining. And you have the right to imagine. But after you've imagined, you come back. <laughs> Amen. There's nothing wrong with having an image. Or close your eyes and see yourself living in a five, seven bedroom house in the UK, not in Ghana. See it. Some plush areas. Living there. Oakwood. Nice, nice house. Living there with your kids roaming about and making noise in the house. Imagination. It will take you there right now. Am I speaking to somebody? What God is also telling you by giving you that ability is that I am possible. Believe me. Amen. Imagination isn't vision. It is just you having pictures. Mental pictures. Spiritual pictures of what is possible. If only you allow God to lead you. Imagination also empowers an individual to be and to do. It empowers an individual to be and unto do. To do. As you keep imagining the best of God, healing can be imagined. Breakthrough can be imagined. But when you descend out of that realm, understand it is God who can make it possible. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. They say comparison is what stops the prisoner from being sad. So he said, what did you do? He said, I headbutted somebody. He said, ah. He said, what did you do? He said, I kicked somebody. He said, oh, so we're on the same level. So imagination allows you to compare what can be with what isn't. Amen. But imagination isn't what? Vision. I am quite careful not to imagine anything and come and stand here and tell you I, God has said when he hasn't said. Because understand that man of God, woman of God, anything you say God has said and he's not sad, he will judge you on it. Hello? He will judge you on it. I want to speak to somebody. Amen? So, imagination isn't what? Vision. Imagination isn't what? Talk to me. Imagination isn't what? vision number three number four situation any situation situations are not visions hallelujah let's go to jeremiah 23 verse 21 situations understand that every situation you go through carries with it its own character character and its own signs and wonders <laughs> oh signs of wonders it carries but situation any situation you encounter isn't a vision. You cannot conjure a vision out of any situation. You can't. Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah 23 verse 21. 23 verse 21. Jeremiah 23 verse 21. I have not sent these prophet. Yet they run. I have not spoken to them. Yet they prophesy. In my sphere of ministry, it is easy to be financially okay. Just with my gift. Amen. And just with the gift. I mean, if I prophesy to you a couple of times that it's come to pass, why would you doubt when I tell you that God is saying that you have to sow and give me this money to chop? You won't doubt it. I tell you, God is saying if you don't, eh, eh, what will happen? <laughs> he said, I've not sent them. Be careful. Of imaginative and situational prophecies. You can look at the man and prophesy to them without seeing anything just by their posture. Maybe the guy has nothing in his pocket. His last suit was what he brought to church with. <laughs> now he's well dressed so you assume he's wealthy. Am I speaking to somebody? Be careful. I can easily, oh well, I can prosper, it's easy. I just have to, if I really want to get on that, 30 days fasting at the mountains. By the time I descend, whatever I tell you, you have to give me money, you will. He said, I've not sent them home. But they do what? Run. Eh? I've not said anything to them. But yet what? They prophesy. I've not said anything. Now, in Ghana's politics, I was watching something when one of the political party uh, leaders was being enthroned as president when they've not yet done the election. And one person said, hey, this prophet is in trouble if the man does not win. <laughs> uh, one of the dangers in ministry 
especially in my of is being forced to say something. Being forced by the situation. Pastor, you know you have to say something. And what I mean, if God has not said, why should I say something? If I say, brother, God be with you, it is more than the prophecy you are looking for. And many years we made some mistakes. But now you can't, no, no I don't, your, your situation shouldn't bring about any vision. Don't allow your situation to speak to you so you have methods and means. And, and, and even, do you know that when you are so broke, that's the time you think of the lottery. Oh, okay, you're holy. You're holy. Many, many years ago in Enfield, Edmonton, I had a small shop and things were not going. So one day I decided I'm going to stake the lottery. You are all holy. I know. When you're broke, that's the time you remember that boyfriend who had money. And you, you, you are searching for his number. Even though you deleted it, you have to go into your delete, deleted numbers and find out. And, 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 and I was just about to pick a lottery sheet. And a woman passed and said, it's a bad character, you know, she just passed. I never saw her. I know it was God. <laughs> I never saw and I've never, never in my life. Hello? Your situation can give you visions. Maybe you, you are waiting on God for uh, uh, a man to love you, to marry you off. Then a guy walks around. He's not the real de deal. But because you think you've waited, I have waited patiently. You are waiting lustfully. So the guy walks up. You've not discerned. You've not prayed. Hey, Pastor, the way things are, let's, I'll take it like that. Ha. For the rest of your life. Eh? marriage is your whole life and you are saying you take it like that and like that, like that you've been like that am I speaking to somebody when you go through dire straits don't make a decision allow your spirit to be free in fact when things are so tough that's the time you have to stop thinking and start worshipping I'm telling you, and I show you a, master, a key. The, the key to confusion is the spirit of worship. The key to any confusion is not prayer. How can a confused person be praying? Would you not be praying confused prayers? You remember when I said one day I was praying and, and I bind Jesus. Oh, God, forgive me. I, I bind Satan. After a while, I bind uh, angel. I, I said, I'm not even praying. Am I speaking to somebody? Don't allow you. Your situation can give you visions and empower you to tell you that it is possible until you've squandered every little resource that you have on it and found out that it wasn't. It's the voice of the Spirit. May it never happen to you in the name of Jesus. That spirit of deception, we bind it in the name of Jesus. You have a clear mind, a clear spirit. Your spirit will be alerted to the voice of God. And when God speaks, you will know that it is the clear cut voice of God, not your situation. Many of us married out of situation. Many of us dated out of situation. I'm growing. You are growing. You are saying you are growing. And God has not given up on you yet. <laughs> eh? Many people are going to make the same mistake. Going to marry. Uh, date. Based on. Oh I don't have my documents. This man said. Uh, uh, one time I was in South London in the bus. I saw a very old man. Chatting up a young woman. I think the girl I just got, oh, I'll do everything. And I was looking at that old man and think, I, a Ghanaian man, I, did, I nearly said, you're a very wicked man. Look at your age. Look at this little girl. You just need fresh blood. Eh? You need fresh blood. You need fresh blood in your house. So you are, this, the man was serious and the girl was happy. And I was looking at the man and said, this girl will be very stupid to think this man, as they say, will do her papers. Am I speaking to somebody? Don't allow your situations to give you. It can give you visions. I'm telling you. A ministry. I'm telling you. It can give. I have. I served my father for nearly 12 years. And I've learned a lot. From church members. I've learned a lot. From ministry. Right from the pulpit. 
Be careful your situation does not give you any vision. Other than that, you'll be like one of these prophets. They were, you, God has not said anything. You are convincing yourself. <laughs> uh, I believe God. <laughs> <laughs> be careful of statements like, oh, I believe God will not decide. I believe, I believe. And the person will be jumping. And, and they will conjure this kind of thing. Joy. And a few weeks, you ask them, what happened to their belief? Pastor, I don't know. I've been praying. And I think it's wasted time. One of the most dangerous things is the committal of the mistakes, especially when you are growing in age. Amen? Because people... As you grow older, your strength wanes, and you wouldn't have the ability to do what young people can do. It would take the anointing of God. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen? So you have to be very careful. Don't let your situation give you a voice or a vision. Hallelujah. Number five, a reaction to a situation. I call them the one day hero. Things were not right and you suddenly appear them with your abilities. You are able to do things and you think it is a vision. You find out that during the credit crunch, major business is closed. And you find out the ones that really dug their heels deep. They thrived. Reaction. You saw an opportunity and, and thought that the opportunity meant a, a vision. So you reacted to the situation and things are not working. I mean, a woman is having trouble with the husband. So she begins to confide in you. What you have to do is one, two, three, you cut off. Because human nature is such that at some point you would think compassion means love. Hello? Oh, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. You would think compassion it means love. And as she keeps telling you, yeah, you also have this uh, flamboyant ear. You are listening, listening, listening. Eventually, you make a mistake. And you find out that that woman is an alomo jata. Where is that? And she's not been telling you the truth. Am I speaking to her? Oh, hey, man. And, 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 and especially the men in this country, we lie. I keep telling friends that women are honest, men are not. A woman can tell you, I'm not interested in you, and she's not lying. It doesn't matter what you do. Men, the man might not be interested in you. Sister, when I look at your nose, I find myself on Mars. When I look at your heels and the way you stride, like the gazelle in the morning in, in, in South Africa, they will tell you all these things. But he knows he's not interested in you. Wave all the women and let me know you are being blessed. And you will not be hurt anymore. A man walks up to you. You know this business. It is the deal of the moment. You have to invest. You didn't design. Greed. Because you wanted to prove everyone you'll be rich quicker than them. All your friends. They see you drive the latest Bentley around. And they say, oh, he's all right. You did not consult. You didn't even waste, it. spend time that a few, three days, at least three days, fast and pray. God, even if you speak to me, send a word. You didn't. Thinking you were smarter. The guy was a confidence trickster. Let me say, he's a confidence trickster. He took your money and you can't find him. Now you are in church. Pastor Joe, you, have, you need to anoint me more. <laughs> Pastor, you need to lay hands on me. One man walked up to here and I said, he said, Pastor, <laughs> you know, I have some money coming. And if this thing up, Pastor, I would give that money. A guy cannot be found anymore in the church. He changed his number without me even knowing he's changed his number. Am I speaking to somebody? <laughs> Reaction. Nine day, at one day heroes. Don't ever assume that is vision. Don't pursue it. What God wanted you to do at that time, He used you to do it. Do it well. Excel in it. Get out. Amen. At some point, Jesus would do everything. He would tell them, Let us cross over. No argument. The people wanted more. He said, Get in the boat and let us do what? It was just one time. The madman at galleries wanted to follow Jesus. He said, I healed you not to follow me. 
It is something that happened now. You got in your freedom. You seen what God is able to do. You were once a madman who was suicidal. Get out and preach the gospel. And the Bible said the guy took the gospel to the ten cities. We never heard of him again. Except that he was an evangelist unto ten cities. I want to speak to somebody. Hmm? In ministry especially. In, in the prophetic office. There are five gifts that you have to exhibit. Before you are called a prophet. Number one. The gift of revelation. Gift of prophecy. The zenning of spirits. Uh, word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. What the problem in our church right now. A man may exhibit one gift. And suddenly. He wants to go and start his own church. One gift is not enough. Can I be honest with you? God has never given any vision to people not in an office. Gifted people are not enough to be given visions when it comes to the kingdom. God prepares you and puts you in an office. Hello? The fact that the security man at the business secures, that it does not mean he isn't part of the business, but it doesn't mean he's the decision maker. The one in the office does. Am I speaking to somebody? So until God finds you and prepares you in that office, you see one thing and now you walk in the spirit. When you are coming, they have to carry. Have you seen some pictures of preachers being carried? Hey, some of you share a lot of pictures. You should see these things. Before the guy will preach, he has to stand on the back of two human beings. Abba. What kind of word of God is this? <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody? So don't get it twisted. Allow God to prepare. When I was 19, started preaching, I thought I'd arrived. Overnight, things were going to be okay. Overnight. I could see, I could hear, I could do I, hey, Not knowing it was a journey. It is the same with your vision. You just saw it, you had it, and you thought, ah, but wait, God wants to take you somewhere. Bigger and better than where you began. Am I speaking? He said, who had despised the day of small beginning? Who had despised the day of small beginnings? Nothing of God begins in the big, as Trump would say, big league. Hallelujah. Everything begins small. It's that as a seed. Your ability to nurture the seed. Respect it. Value it. Take care of the seed. Water the seed with prayer and fasting is what allows God to give you more. And as God can entrust you and he gives you more, he elevates you, lifts you, lifts you until the place of greater significance. And until he takes time to prepare you, you will stay where you are. Number two, until you yield to God's preparation, you will still be gifted but insignificant David was 8 and 17 when they anointed him the, the Bible said the prophet Samuel was sent into the house of Jesse God said I have chosen for me in that house a king and said take your horn go to that house when he went in there he asked for all the sons of Jesse to show up when they showed up he said he was about to anoint when God said no I have not chosen any of them and he asked Jesse, do you have any more sons? He said, I have but one. He's in the desert taking care of the sheep. He said, send for him. And we would not sit until he comes. And the Bible said from a distance, Samuel saw David. The Bible describes him as being ruddy, red faced and beautiful. He said, God told Samuel, this is him. Anoint him for I've chosen him. When David was anointed, he still went back to shepherding. Take your time. The vision will come to pass. The anointing placed on your head does not mean you've arrived. It means I have seen you. I have chosen you. I will take you there. And that's the challenge with us. You see, one of the dangers in life is poverty. Pray, obey God, and free you and your generations from poverty. Many of the things our behavior is poverty-based. Poverty-based behavior. People fighting, angry, jealous. It's poverty. 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 When poverty eats into the rudiments of a person, they have the scarcity mentality. Everything should be about them. If it's not about them, then... And that's the danger. And that's why only a few Africans are able to do mighty things. I was listening to an interview with uh, this... I like him, Oti Dola. He's, into, he, he's uh, an oil magnet. And Dan Goti. And talking about his, and, and not knowing, they didn't start today. It's taken years. 
Even in this ministry. I was so, uh, listening to Pastor Matthew. He said he, he started preaching uh, 30, nearly 40 years. Ha. 40 years. This is where he's gotten. You start today. You want to be there. Please. Tell somebody take your time. Tell somebody take your time. So vision is not based on situation number uh, number six. Confirmation. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. Be careful. Be careful. Or people, not God. Confirming that we believe this is your vision. Pa. With the, when we look at your muscles, I think you can be a boxer. <laughs> by now you should be boxing. and by, I see you there being a heavyweight champion. One blow destroyed you. Because men would always... You see, God said that man looks at the outward. It won't change. Amen. Amen. Am I speaking to you? It won't change. It is part and parcel of human nature to look at the outward. But don't let somebody look at your outward and confirm and confirm a vision on you. He said, uh, this is the third time I'm coming to you. The mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter will be established. Regardless, let God confirm what he's called you to do. Amen. Is somebody listening? See, you wouldn't believe that God speaks, but he speaks to every one of us. The Bible didn't say you will send a prophet to perfect that which concerneth my life. He said you shall arise. You, and the Lord shall perfect that which concerneth my life. He knows how to perfect it. Take your time. The person I teach in ministry is not even the known type. The person I pour my spirit, my heart, my vision, dreams, and I, I call to teach them the Bible is not even known. They approach me with humility that, hey, and, and funny enough, I'm able to converse freely with that individual. Pour my spirit out onto him. Confirmation. Be careful, oh. Be careful. Oh, and, and, and this thing in our culture, a young boy and a young girl cannot be friends without somebody saying, be, 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 be. And, and you place burden on people to deceive them. And, 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 and one person is expecting the be, be, some, oh, maybe it is a something. And we force people. And then, then the, the person grows out to find they can't be something. And one is disappointed. Be careful of people confirmation. Oh, did you? I saw you and that young man. I think he's good for you. How do you know? Somebody walking or talking to some. How can you determine the, the beginning and the end of how good that individual is for the person? And we, we put people in situations they are not meant to be. Hello? Oh, let, I know I'm preaching. I know I'm preaching. I know I'm blessing. Hey, be careful. A people confirmation. Even when we prophesy to you, take it to the Lord. Ask God, He will speak to you. He speaks. He will speak to you. Careful. Be careful. Careful. Don't let people confirm things they believe, they feel. They believe. And, and in church, when people are like, no, oh, pastor, we have to do this. I'm saying we won't. Politely. And people get offended. And I'm not bothered by that holy offense. <laughs> because, listen, there's nothing God wants me to do, he will tell you. Why do you think God would have to tell me what you have to do? Amen? He will tell you. Your refusal is what demands the next person's impute. Am I speaking to somebody? You tell people, no, we can't. Wait, there's a time of... Ah! Ah! And, and what I can't stand, let me tell you this point blind, are people try and compare churches. If you feel one church is better, what are you doing here? Amen? Amen. Oh, in that church. Go to that in that church. <laughs> and leave us. Because there's a time in... Of God for everyone. Why do you want me to force myself. To be. 
what I've not been called to. And so you want me to face out within a few years and die and then appear before God and be judged because I listened to you? The devil is wearing mokas. It can't happen. I might speak to her. So, so don't, don't approach me with, hey, you know, pastor, hey, 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 hey. I've told my wife, you can't approach me on church issues if you've not prayed. Because before Esther could uh, approach Jesus, she fasted and prayed. Do you know why? I have influence. If you tell me things about church and, and, and you've not prayed about it, and being your husband, I love you and I listen to you. And I do it and anything happens, we will be judged. And my wife does not until she's convinced. Amen? Be careful, oh. This life. There are many, many, many voices. Many, many. There's, but there's only one voice. And that's the one voice you're looking for. Everybody seems to have an opinion. Opinion are like noses. They come in different shapes. But there's one from God. One word from God. And your life can be changed forever. Be careful. Tell somebody I'm not late. I will get there. Tell somebody I'm not late. People, be careful. Ministry, people flex all kinds of, trying to prove what? Prove what? Prove what? Ha. Huh. Do you know how much it goes into just getting this a small, a small setting working a lot? It's not the physicality, it's the spirituality. Amen? I'm not against, like I said the other day, being advised or being uh, suggestions being made, but pray about them. Don't just sit there and assume you went to a church and saw that they had uh, a TV. We don't own this place. How can you tell me, but let's have TV. What, what am I? <laughs> we don't own this place. Now, now, oh, Pastor, by now we should be on TV. Ah, the money that we need to spend on building the church, we should take it to go on TV. Go and start your church and go on TV. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? Take your time. Every, he said that all these things, one day, if you want to tell your family members, I mean, I'm on TV now, which it will happen. They will check you and you're on TV. But until then, keep your money for your TV. Don't you have TVs at home? Watch TVs. I mean, in ministry, all kinds of pressures. And, then, and, and that's why I live outside London. So you can't approach my house anytime. <laughs> Before you come there, you'd have driven 60 miles. Before you come back, 120, you won't come again. <laughs> hallelujah oh clap offering unto the lord <laughs> hallelujah i'm almost done is, is somebody learning something kindly stand so so be careful of people confirmation people confirmation kindly stand. <laughs> eh? they look at you and that man and they match you and you're also happy that they are matching you <laughs> oh by now no 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 so vision is none of these things number one vision is not ambition Vision is not reaction, vision is not impression, and vision is not people confirmation. But it can go on and go on. Vision does not, don't allow your situation to speak to you as a form of vision. Hallelujah. Kindly lift up your hands.